of the most common things I hear about is destructive puppies. Uh, mainly with the pit bulls and the Malinois and the German Shepherds. Um, because that's what I follow mostly on social media. But I'm sure everybody else has the same problem. Especially with the high drive dogs. Um, I'll do another video on crate training. Um, and how to do it with an older dog or even a puppy that wasn't crate trained early. Um, for the puppies, especially if you get them, you know, anywhere from 8 to 12 weeks, as soon as, as soon as you get that dog, it needs to be introduced to the crate. Um, the whole thing about these puppies that tear up your house, eat your couch, pee and poop everywhere, is because they have too much freedom. It's great to give your dog all the freedom in the world, but he has to learn how to coexist before you can give him all that freedom. This is why we keep our kids at home until they're 18 years old. Theoretically, by 12 or 13, you know, their bodies are big enough, they could go work a job, but their minds are not developed far enough. They have not learned everything there is to learn to safely send them out into the world. So your dog's going to be the same way. As it gets older, you can start to give more freedoms and you don't have to be as strict on it. But at, at, at 12 weeks old, your puppy should not be out of your sight for even one minute. If you cannot physically watch your puppy and see what he is doing, you need to put him in a crate. Now this is not to be used as doggy jail. You can't be a lazy piece of shit. And, and just lock your dog up all day. That's not what I'm saying. That's not the purpose of the crate. That's going to have an adverse reaction. And it's going to make things so much worse. But the purpose of the crate is to stop these bad habit, habits from ever happening in the first place. Your puppies get into trouble when they're bored. Or when they don't have anything constructive to do. Now I'm not saying you have to be a drill sergeant. Or work the crap out of your dog. I'm not saying that either. But. If. You had a newborn baby, you would put up baby gates to keep that newborn baby in the room with you so you could keep an eye on it at all times, right? So when your puppy is 8 to 12 weeks old, give or take, that is a newborn infant. You don't let it out of your sight. And you crate the dog. And by crating the dog on a regular basis, not only does it stop these bad habits from ever starting, it creates a safe space for the dog. It gives the dog its own personal space. I'm big about dogs not having belongings, so that one tiny little area that that dog can go lay down to call its own, if it feels stressed or it feels worried or whatever later on in life, it will go back to that crate. I've got grown dogs now that the crate's just sitting there open and for no reason they'll get up, leave the room and go lay in the crate. They love it. It's good for them. Also, the separation anxiety, man. I swear, all these people... They spend so much time with their dogs and love their dogs so much. They're creating these anxious, just, the dogs are a mess. If the person goes out of their sight for a second, the dogs lose it. And I know you guys think that creating might be harsh to handle something like that. But the fact is, is if you create them early, you never develop that problem. Because the separation anxiety is not something that the dog just has. It's not a disease. He's not sick. That's, that's, that's something that happened based on the environment he was in. You built such a strong bond with the dog and got him used to being around you all the time, but you never taught him how to be alone. You only showed him life with you. So the dog's life revolves around you, and now he can't cope with being alone. And you may think crating's not nice, but I promise you, your dog sitting there for eight hours while you're at work, um, in his mind having a nervous breakdown, that's not nice. A dog that is content and happy laying in his crate waiting for me to get home from work, sleeping, that's healthy. That That's what you want. You want your dog to be happy and content, not nervous and anxious and all over the house and chewing shit up. Um, and not only that, there's the... The physical danger of it, I have literally been sitting at a computer with my foot on a puppy. The damn puppy chewed on the power cord, and when it electrocuted the puppy, it got me too. That's how I know what happened. Didn't hurt the dog, didn't kill the dog, nothing like that. Um, wasn't my dog, wasn't my house or anything like that. It just so happened to happen. And, uh, 
you know, that really made me think about it. You know, that dog, she was on the wrong cord, gets him just right. That, that's, whew, doggone. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've seen dogs eat remote controls and, and, and things like that. You know, all the metal inside. I've seen the videos from where the vets are pulling stuff out of these dogs' stomachs that where they get impacted. And this is either going to cost you a couple thousand dollars for the surgery or your dog's going to die. That's not nice. If he was in a crate, he would have never developed that problem in the first place. Um, problem is, is like I said, people use it like doggy jail. It's not, it's not to be used as a punishment. It's not to be used as a jail. You, you, have to, you have to handle your puppy. You have to have him out and around you. But when you can't watch him, because we have jobs and shit, you know, we have stuff to do. When you can't, and we go to sleep at night. I don't care who you are. There's no puppy that, at, at, at six months or less that you can trust for eight hours without supervision. Create that damn dog when you go to bed, most especially. So by doing all that, you're working, you, you, you're, you're cutting out the bad habits, getting into your trash, eating your couch, uh, pottying in the house overnight. Because the dog, if you got him in the right size crate, he will try his best not to potty in that crate. Only exception being, I had one guy tell me about if he will put his dog in the crate, she would instantly start trying to use the bathroom. And I asked him, I said, well, do you take the dog out to clean it up? He said, well, duh. Yeah, I take the dog out. I got to clean the shit up. I'm not going to leave him in there in his shit. All right? That's a learned behavior. The dog figured out, if I poop in the crate, he's going to let me out of here. So he poops in the crate. Dog gets out while the person cleans the crate. I don't know if he ever put him back in the crate or not. But no matter what, the dog got his freedom. So if something like that happens, just make sure you're not unintentionally rewarding the dog so if you're if it, if it seems like your dog's peeing and pooping in the crate on purpose to get you to let him out while you clean it up put that dog on a leash take a leash hook it to the crate have your puppy sit leash him set him down clean the crate put him right back in the crate and stop putting stuff in the crate if, if you're putting blankets and pillows and beds in the crate for the dog to destroy you're completely defeating the purpose of, of creating the dog. Then you're just confining it and giving him certain things that he could chew up and ingest. Defeats the purpose. Put your dog in the crate on the flat bottom. And I promise you, by the time your dog is a year old, you'll start giving him freedom. You'll start to see. When you look back on it, hindsight's twenty twenty. It's nice when you have a puppy at 9, 10 months old like I do right now. And I have one of the most dominant puppies known to man. She is Lab Akita mix and German Rottweiler Pitbull mix. Both of her parents are very stable, very smart dogs, but they're very, very dominant. They're very confident dogs. They know who they are. They know what they can do, and that's just what it is. Um, so she has an energy level like you have probably never seen before, and yet she's fine in the crate. I don't even have to shut the door all the time. If I go in my bedroom turn the light off she automatically comes to my bedroom and goes in the crate and looks at me now I don't always go in my room to go to bed so if I'm not going to bed and I'm awake I won't lock her in the crate sometimes she'll lay down in the crate sometimes she'll go on back out but but she knows it's that time so she she checks with me you know so to speak the dogs don't don't get all upset about it or anything like that they 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 just adapt it's just part of their life um, and not only that, my puppy's sitting there looking at four other dogs laying on the bed with us, and she's in the crate. Everybody says, oh, that's not fair. She's going to be jealous. No. She might whine a little bit at first. You know, she did. But with her, they, they were literally, from a few days after, a couple days after they were born, um, they went straight into the crate with their mom. That was their home. That's where they lived. We brought them out. We made sure the crate stayed clean. You know, you got to clean that thing about every hour when you first have puppies. It's, it's crazy. And you can't use any chemicals on it or anything like that either. So you've got to make sure, you know, nothing nothing is built up in there. Once your puppies are 8, 10, 12 weeks old, you know, it's, it, it's good to go ahead and clean it with something to sanitize it. But not with brand new puppies. But if you happen to be the parent of a litter of puppies... Um, unless you're taking the puppies out for a good period of time and letting it dry, it would be a good idea to bleach it. But I'm just talking about standard maintenance on a daily basis. You need to be cleaning it out immediately and put them puppies right back in there. Um, because then they don't know any different. That's They chose that life. And if you crate train properly, 
they will choose that life. And this also works with older dogs, but I'll do another video on how to do that. This one went kind of long. Um, but yeah, long story short, um, spanking your dog's not going to work. You can give your dog a thousand treats, and it's not going to teach him not to do bad behavior. But if you don't ever allow him to do the bad behavior, and if you're sitting there watching him, and your puppy goes to get into the trash, don't hurt the dog. Just go over there, take him by the scruff of the neck, give him your no command, and redirect him over to something else. If they're hard-headed, so to speak, and they keep going back to it, you need to redirect them with something that's going to hold their attention. But don't don't change your life so much to fit the puppy. You need to make the puppy change to fit you. For example, I, I'm not hiding my trash can from my dogs. That's not going to happen. Um, if my dogs can't stay out of the trash, they will just be created when I can't look at them. And like I said, I mean, if you get these puppies and you create them for the first year, and after that, you know, between one-year-old and two-year-old, you'll rarely have to create them, man. You'll be so thankful that you put in the work in the beginning. The dog will be thankful. It'll be able to handle stress better. When it stays alone, it learns to be content by itself. He's not got separation anxiety. And uh, having that stable mindset will help in all of the areas combined. So you, you got to think about this like you're building with Legos. You're building your dog piece by piece, and there's a lot of Legos going into this castle. Make sure you don't leave, you know, random holes in your castle because you forgot a building block. Make sure you get all these building blocks in there early, and it just, it makes things so much easier later. Crate the puppies, man. Crate the puppies. Stop letting them destroy your house. Even their own toys. I'm sick of seeing that too, man. Everybody, oh, I got a power chewer. He tears up his toys in five minutes. It's because you let him. 